sorry. Um, so my first highlight on page one is in that first paragraph. Um, it's the second to last sentence in that first paragraph. This output signal manipulates the final element to maintain the desired process conditions, such as the specific flow rate, pressure, temperature, or level. So the output signal is what manipulates the final element in order to change your pressure, temperature, level, or flow. Basic control modes, um, 110. You've got automatic control. I've got automatic control highlighted with the first sentence. Um, so first bullet point, first sentence. This is the most frequently used control mode, control mode in which the controller um, uses an error signal to determine an appropriate output signal to send to the final control device. So that's just saying if I have a same thing as I always say, if I had a tank and we're saying it's at uh, not we're gonna say we're a hundred foot tank, our set point is fifty feet, and that's our set point, and say say the tank is empty all the way at zero. Um, that Whatever you're taking to measure your level, whether that's an ultrasonic or a little differential pressure cell, um, connect, <coughs> connect to the top or bottom, <coughs> or a pressure transducer, whatever you're using to uh, measure level. If you have zero feet in the tank, it's going to determine um, what to send. Say, say we have a, a valve right here um, that's motor operated. It's going to send this this probably 100% open in order to start filling this tank. But if I was at, say I was at like 47 feet, it's only going to open up this valve. It's only going to open it up like 5% because it's almost there. Does that make sense? The, the controllers are in automatic mode. Um, the, the set point or the controller is going to adjust whatever um, the output is based on how close it is to the set point. Um, I've got local control highlighted. Um, third bullet point, first two sentences are one highlight. Local control, when a controller is placed in local control, the set point to the controller become, set point to the controller comes from a set point adjustment located on the controller itself. The only way to change the set point is to manually change it with the set point adjustment. That's saying like the, the PID controller that some of y'all mess with this semester or in other ones will next semester, that, that controller is local to what you're controlling. It's right there. It's not, not a remote location in a control room or something like that. The only way to control it is locally at that um, controller. The, the rest of that is a separate highlight. So note, do not confuse local control with manual control. Manual control affects the output of the controller while local control affects where and how the controller gets it set up. Remote control. I've got the second sentence or the last sentence on the page on page one highlighted. Um, if the remote source, if the remote source, the set point comes from is another controller, this mode is called cascade control. So if it is another controller, that is called cascade control. Or if it's another controller, it's called remote control. Page two, one, two, zero. Check um, off. Did it just turn off when I switched slides, or is it been off? I noticed the writer just said page two, so I'm not failing to tell you. Um, pneumatic controllers. Um, I'm not going to go into the the breakdown of these too much because, um, like, they're going to talk about the internal parts and and how these things work, and how there's bellows and air supply, final control, and stuff like that. Um, it's good to know, but this is one of those things. If something if something in the pneumatic controller went bad, 
you're replacing the whole control. You're not going to go in here and replace certain parts of it for the most part. You're going to you're going to uh, change the whole controller. Uh, so my first highlight in one two zero is the second sentence um, in one two zero. The signal can come from a measuring element, an I to P transducer, which converts an electrical current signal into the equivalent pressure signal, pneumatic signal or pneumatic transmitter. Then the next, um, so on page two, the next um, start of those bullet points is highlighted. All pneumatic controllers have some common components, including the following. And then I highlighted the second bullet point, flapper and flapper nozzle which is the mechanism that determines the output signal and uses compressed air for response. So you need to know that the flapper nozzle determines the output signal. One, two, one. On-off control. The first sentence is highlighted for on-off control. On-off control is often referred to as discrete control or two-position control. So I always want you to, whenever you hear discrete or on-off, I want you to think of binary, um, ones and zeros, ons and on or off. Um, this is it's not going to it's not going to have any. Um, it's not going to say open this valve 50% or 75%. Control is 100% or 0%, right? On off, you need a PN on, on off can also be discrete. So discrete ones and zeros on off. Um, the third sentence in one, two, one um, is an online test question. So control adjustments are made by changing the set points or the differential gap. Differential gaps uh, defined as the difference between a high and low set point. So control adjustments are made by changing the set points or the differential gap, which are high and low set points. Proportional control, one, two, two. Flipping over to page four. So proportional control, unlike on and off, proportional would be like opening that valve a certain amount. Like proportional means that there is, um, you can have between zero and 100% change. Uh, top right of page four, that second sentence in the top right is highlighted right after where you see proportional band. Uh, proportional band is the range of values of the measured variable that the final element moves through as the controller output changes from a minimum value. One, two, three, proportional controllers with reset. So when you hear reset, um, I want you to think of interval. Reset means interval. Um, the first one, two, three sentences in one, two, three are highlighted. An interval reset function can also be added to the controller. Reset or interval under underline or key in on those provides an output that is proportional to the time interval of the input. In other words, the output continues to change as long as an error between the set point and variable exists. So all that's saying is like I've got my my level over time, however long it takes me to get to my set point be something like this, which is proportional, it's gonna, it's gonna end up like that. You're gonna have this little bit of difference right here, but your your integral P G R A K I want that the integral will will make up for that difference right there. That's what your integral control does. But you need to know that it's whenever you hear integral also think of reset. So it's kind of like it's resetting until it gets 
until he gets <coughs> in so many ways. Um, one, two, four, proportional controllers with integral and derivative. So PID control, so that's the highest level control we're going to talk about. Um, online test question is the third sentence. So page five, one, two, four, third sentence, or second to last sentence on the page. The amount of delay is determined by the rate at which the difference between the set point and control point increases or decreases. Anybody see that? <clears throat> Amount of delay is determined by the rate at which the difference between the set point and control point increases or decreases. Page six and seven. Specific controller operation, one, two, five. So um, you've got feed forward and feedback. Um, anybody remember what the feed forward control is also called? Open, Open loop. Good. So that's that's where you are physically standing there, looking at um, whatever whatever the process is. Say this is a pressure gauge or something like that, or um, and it's getting too high. You have to physically go shut the valve yourself. That is open control. There's nothing, there's nothing measuring the pressure, temperature, level, or flow of this process besides you, you or the operator. So the operator is manually it's, um, adjusting that. Um, manual feed forward with feedback control. Feedback control. So this you have a little bit of feedback coming from this, but it's still feed forward because it's still open loop. Because um, with feedback control or closed loop control, this control variable would actually automatically um, change the valve. So my highlight on page seven is all the way in the bottom left. Um, second paragraph of one, two, five, the, I think it's the last two sentences in the bottom left of page seven. In figure 10A, the operator or controller detects the disturbance that will change the process and reacts, adjusting the control valve by an, by an amount calculated to return the process to the desired condition. This is feed forward, which is sometimes referred to as open loop. Uh, the next one, they, they talk about a Ma uh, Mazzalonian controller. They show the, the pictures get a little bit further ahead uh, or behind, but if you flip over to page eight and nine, uh, they have the Mazzalonian 1200 series controller, um, and that's just a, a slide control. I don't have a picture on the board, um, but you can see the picture in, in figure 11 at the top right of page nine. My highlight for that is the first one sentence paragraph on page eight. Three adjustments are normally made to align the Mazzalonian level controller, the specific gravity, proportional band adjustment, and the set point adjustment. Three adjustments, specific gravity, proportional band, and set point. And you can see um, in those two green notes, on page eight, you can see Mazzalonian is now owned by GE. Taylor is now part of ABB. A lot of these companies are buying up other companies. Um, like the, what is it? Emerson, I think owns Fisher Valves. Fisher Valves are pretty big. I think Emerson's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I think they just tried to buy um, Rockwell Software, which is, Gigantic, that's anything that's going to have, have to do with an Allen Bradley HMI or PLC. <clears throat> but you'll notice that um, I think it's kind of like any other thing. I think they say like 10 companies in the United States own like 90% of the companies or something like that. That's the same thing for instrumentation stuff. Like there's going to be a big top company and then they're going to own a bunch of different companies um, alongside. I don't have anything in Taylor controllers, Foxborough controllers. Um, 
but I do have in the other pneumatic controllers. Um, you flip over to page 11. Should have. Fisher controller. So this is going to be, I would say this is probably going to be what's most common that you'll see. Um, a pneumatic controller on the front of, of a Fisher valve. Usually Fisher's, Fisher valves are all green. Um, green or gray, gray position on them. Um, I've got that whole paragraph on page 11 um, above 130 highlighted. So the Fisher C1 series, figure 17, or what's on the board is a pneumatic pressure controller. It's marketed as an energy responsible controller. It compares sense process pressure or differential pressure with a set point and sends a pneumatic signal to a control element. The energy responsible designation is uh, established because the controller requires less compressed air or gas to operate. If you remember from previous um, control, previous chapters, we've talked about so a lot of these controllers require quite a bit of air pressure. You even have to put a booster pump on some of these in order to con control this. If you look over at the cutaway valve over there, and you can see the red spring that's on the inside, um, you got to have quite a bit of air pressure to overcome that spring tension in there. So the, the these Fisher valves are saying takes less less air than than a, a normal valve does. But that down is the gate valve. It's this is prop no. Since this is a control valve, what's what's the most common type of control valve? What do you control with? Not a gate valve. Check valve. Not oh, check valve. valve. Check valve would just be one way. You can only flow one. Safety way. valve. Global valve. Globe valve. So I can tell this is a globe valve just by looking. Um, anybody remember what these markings are called? The pressure, what distance has to go the flow. This is like this tells you what the flow is. Flow. So uh -huh. you can see the arrow. So my flow is going okay. this way, but it comes in, goes down, um, comes in, goes down, and then back out. I can't remember how that how that's split but you can look on the glow valve that's over there and on the back side there's actually these bridge wall markings um, that show how it how it um, the, flow the flow turns inside of this and you can kind of tell a lot of a lot of times these glow valves are kind of more rounded at the bottom um, but this is definitely most control valves should be and they have the oil display here the what no oh, no, 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 no this is the other one yeah no this is an orchestra plate yeah, no, that's in the Electronic controllers, 130, page 12. Um, a lot, I think. Pneumatic controllers are still pretty well used because of how cheap they are, but a lot of places are going to electronic controllers because they're easier to um, they're easier to control from one location rather than a pneumatic controller. Uh, but you can go through all the different bullet points that talk about the advantages compared to pneumatic controllers. I don't have any of those highlighted. It might be worth reading through those. Uh, but in the top right of page 12, the most basic type of electronic controller consists of the following. You want to highlight that, and I've got the second bullet point highlighted. The unbalanced detector compares the input signal to the set point. The next bullet point is a separate highlight amplifier. The amplifier increases the unbalanced detector signal to a usable size. So the um, amplifier changes the input signal to usable size. Um, yeah. Um, and then the last bullet point is highlighted the control motor uh, that just positions the uh, final element. So usually a control motor, it's a motor operated valve, so it, it opens it up between zero and 100%. 
Um, they talk about on off control. That's just going to be on or off for, I mean, this is electric valve, so it can be a solenoid valve, would be an on off valve. A gate valve should be an on off valve, but it's not usually a control, it should be used as a control valve. But a solenoid valve, um, like you use on the um, level and flow trainer, those just click on and off. Those are just on off controls. Um, proportional control 132, um, second paragraph. Second sentence is an online test question. Second paragraph, second sentence is an online test question. The control slide wire sends a signal back to the unbalanced detector as feedback, which cancels the original unbalance. Online test question. And then page 13, second sentence is highlighted. Um, with a narrow proportional band, a small movement from the set point causes a large unbalance. These are the, um, I don't think these are test questions, but these next two highlights are highly missed. Um, so narrow proportional band, small movement causes large unbalance. My next highlights in the top, top right of page 13 with a wide proportional band, a large movement from the set point causes a small imbalance. So wide proportional band, large movement, small imbalance, uh, narrow proportional band, small movement, large imbalance. Electronic controllers um, with different, so that's just proportional control or just P. They talk about PI, 133, I don't have any highlights in that. 134 talks about PID controllers um, with electrical, um, with electrical, electronic controllers. Um, so 134, second sentence is highlighted in 134. The derivative unit receives the proportional feedback signal from the control slide wire and delays signal to the unbalanced detector. The PN on delays and unbalanced detector. Fourteen and fifteen. Um, page fifteen. They talk about different types of examples, um, but that. That middle paragraph on the left side, page 15, last sentence is highlighted. It incorporates an embedded and programmable microprocessor with a modern display to enable operator interaction. So PID controller that's out on the trainer that you're sitting there pushing buttons on, that's you're using, that's what it's saying. It has a modern display so that you can interact with it. A lot easier than it used to be. So that is all my highlights for this last chapter. So you can either take home everything. Yeah, everybody has their, everybody got their practice test, right? Give that out. So you can take this home for homework and come back and take the test on Thursday, or you can take time and go through the section review, module review, and practice test, and I'll check all that stuff. And you can take your test tonight and be done. Um, if you have everything else done, like I said, we're just, I'm just going to roll, um, labs over in the next semester, um, sign up for instrumentation four before next class. So that if you have a problem, I can try to help you with it. Uh, so your option, I've got, I mean, it's technically we still have two hours of class left. If you want to sit here and knock this out right quick and do this test today, you can, or, um, Thursday we'll be taking this. Any questions? All right. So the test we made up. So you got. You got the answer to the test and more just go. Huh? The practice test. What about it? He was given the answer that he wants to put. I want you to do it and then I'll check it. Um, you've got seven, eight, and nine to do. Seven, eight. That's how I'm going to do mine. All right. I'm getting a computer. Here, this one's right.
Eric, are you going to... I'm probably going down. So you're going to take eight right now? Okay. 